Okay, let's get started with solving the most basic kind of a diode circuit. Let's say that I have a voltage source here called Vx. Uh, I have a current of Ix flowing through the circuit, and I have a simple resistor, one kilo, in series with a diode. And the question is, find Ix, right? So this is the question, what is Ix, right? Uh, just to remind you, I have uh, the voltage current relationship of a diode as ID equal to IS e to the power of or well exponential of VT over VT minus 1 and we said that we can actually approximate that to IS e exponential of VT over VT or we could say that basically I can rearrange this equation and say that VT is equal to vt um, ln of i d over i s right in this in these equations vd is the diode voltage across the diode id is the current through the diode i s is the reverse saturation current so this is a given thing and vt is also given it's 26 or sometimes for the ease of math they uh, give us a vt of 25 millivolts right so these are given numbers. So if it's not given to you, assume it's 26 millivolts. If it's if if it's telling you that it's 25 millivolts, well, even better. Your math is going to be nicer a little bit. Um, so we have voltage and current relationship for the diode, and I want to find the current. Well, from my circuit analysis knowledge, I'm thinking that let's write KVL. I know that plus Vx minus R1 Ix minus well i'm just going to write vd for now because it, there's no ohm's law for a diode so let's just write vd is equal to zero okay so this means that vx is equal to r1 um, this is ix r1 ix plus vd right which is basically what we have here um, and then the next step would be replacing vd from this equation with well vt ln of id over is well since the current flowing through the diode is I, ix i'm going to write ix instead of id good so um it means that i have a relationship between current and voltage right so basically uh, if i want to write the relationship it's going to be basically vx is equal to ix r1 plus vt ln of ix over is okay now out of these i know that r1 is given vt is given and is is given so it's basically vx versus ix so if vx is given i can easily find ix right so let's let's try it so let's say that I have Vx equal to 3 volts and let's say that I well Vt I, R1 is given Vt is 26 millivolts and Is let's say is 10 to the negative 16 amperes very small current right so everything is given except for Ix and I ask you to calculate Ix what do you do it's a one equation one unknown right but is it easy to solve is it something that you can solve without using let's say a programming calculator or MATLAB or something like that and remember we have an equation that is like we have a non-linear equation here that you kind of need to use iterative methods to to solve it right so because we know that basically this equation becomes 3 is equal to R1 is 1000, so 1000 Ix plus 0.026 ln of Ix over 10 to the negative 16. So yes, it is one equation, one unknown, but it's not a linear equation. Therefore, you cannot use normal like ways or like the, the conventional ways to actually solve it. Uh, you could start with guessing 
going with like a number from ix and then just doing an iterative method like increasing it and decreasing it until you get there or you provide this to um, a numerical solver such as in like your matlab your in your calculator or in matlab and then they will give you some number but imagine what will happen this is one equation uh, what will happen if you have I don't know five six different diodes and then five six different resistors and we will have circuits like that uh, and a bunch of capacitors as well it's just going to be a disaster it's going to be a nightmare to actually solve it using this exponential kind of a method exponential model that we have for um, diodes current voltage relationship right it kind of motivates us to actually have a simpler model and we're going to introduce those simpler models in the next slides but uh, just for your curiosity if you actually have done the math uh, you should get for uh, vx equal to three volts you should get somewhere an ix somewhere close to 2.2 milliamp okay um, for one volt i think you get somewhere around 0.2 milliamp but uh, these numbers are not that important. The important thing is that you appreciate the fact that uh, this exponential model and this exponential relationship between the current and voltage of a diode is going to make things extremely uh, complicated when, you, when it comes to circuit analysis because it's just basically if we're a simple or perhaps simplest possible circuit like this, we have this much difficulty in calculating IX and we actually had to resort to MATLAB or uh, some special calculator what will happen in if I have like a, um, a network of different kind of like basically a, 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 a collection of different kind of uh, equations all of them are exponential right it's just going to be um, impossible to do it by hand and a lot of time you want to get intuition yes I know that like you can always provide you can always draw this circuit and provide it to spice LT spice or P spice um, and or like even do it uh, using numerical modeling and give it to MATLAB and it actually solves everything for you. But you want to get an intuition of like basically what is happening. Like if the current here is 2.2 milliamp, you need to know like why exactly it, it is 2.2 milliamp. Like how is it working? Remember like we talked about like voltage dividers and current dividers when we we're uh, basically discussing resistive circuits in ECS 2200. Uh, you could give those circuits to some circuit solver and it would have provided you with all the currents and voltages but then now you have an intuition that like okay so like if I have a current division when the resistor is smaller it's going to get more current and when it's larger it's going to get less current it's actually proportional to their size right it's kind of like that we want to have that kind of intuition that's the point of hand analysis as a good engineer you should be able to actually know why certain things are happening in your circuits rather than just having the final answer from a circuit solver which we can always have but then what well, there's no difference between you and somebody who know who knows nothing about circuits okay so we're going to define new models that uh, to a good extent kind of resemble the exponential model but uh, they do they're not as precise as the exponential model but to a very high accuracy they can actually model the circuit behavior therefore we can actually analyze our circuits and then get a really good idea about like how much current each how much current each branch is going to have and how much voltage each node is going to have and then yes if you want dead accurate kind of uh, um numbers then yeah you can use a circuit solver but even then you have to remember all of these are like even the the models that circuit solvers are actually using are models so they are also outcomes of some numerical analysis so they're 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 not like really reality so there's always some error involved so why not uh use models that make us make make our lives much easier 